Are you looking to improve employee engagement and retention? Do you struggle with decisions on who to hire or who to promote? I have an amazing opportunity for a forward-thinking, purpose-led, people-first organisation to work with me on the first pilot Happier at Work programme for corporates. The programme is entirely science-backed and you will have tangible outcomes in relation to employee engagement, retention, performance and productivity. The programme is aimed at people leaders with responsibility for hiring and promotion decisions. If this sounds like you, please get in touch at Aoife at happieratwork.ie. That's A-O-I-F-E at happieratwork.ie. You're listening to the Happier at Work podcast. I'm your host, Aoife O'Brien. This is the podcast for leaders who put people first. The podcast covers four broad themes, engagement and belonging, performance and productivity, leadership equity, and the future of work. Everything to do with the Happier at Work podcast relates to employee retention. You can find out more at happieratwork.ie. Hello and welcome to this week's episode of the Happier at Work podcast. I'm so delighted that you have joined me today in this exploration. So today I am talking about the concept of toxic productivity. I featured in a article in the Irish Times a couple of months ago all around this idea, this relatively new concept of toxic productivity. And it really gave me pause for thought and to really think about What impact, when we talk about being more productive, what impact is that actually having on us? And so I wanted to explore the topic in a little bit more detail on today's podcast. So there's a couple of areas I'm going to talk about. The first one really is, I suppose, the reason behind the idea that productivity has become a little bit toxic. And I'm as guilty as the next person by talking about things like productivity and encouraging myself and other people to constantly be more productive. The first area I suppose I want to look at is this idea of busyness as a badge of honour. And this has been going on for a long time. If you ask someone how they are, typically they will say, I'm busy. You know, how has your week been? I'm busy. It's always I'm busy, busy, busy. Like that's always the answer. It seems to be just so common for people to say that. Now, I've flipped the script slightly on that. If someone asks me how I am and I am what typically people would say busy, I try and flip that to say I'm productive. So this week I've been really productive. I've got a lot of stuff done. I've had a lot on my plate, but I've also got a lot of stuff done. I'll talk about that in a little bit more detail later on the podcast. The other idea is that busyness is associated with success. Now, if I think back to my early career and it seemed to be if you were invited to meetings, then you were someone who was really important. And so being at meetings had this kind of badge of honour associated with it. It had this kind of prestige. And I think that's still the same today. If you are busy, even if that busyness is associated with being in a lot of meetings, there's this association that you are somehow successful. So that's kind of another driver of this toxic productivity. Some of the things that cause this can be going back to this idea of meetings. So being in too many meetings, being invited to too many meetings, And if you ask anyone, (laughs) they're in too many meetings. They just have too many meetings. So when it comes to meetings, are you in the right meetings? Do you really need to be there? Do you really need to, if you're running the meeting, do you really need to hold that meeting or could that meeting be an email? Could it be another form of communication instead? So maybe consider some of those things. What is the purpose of the meeting? And is it just for a discussion? And does everyone who's there actually need to be there? Or could it be, is it for decision making purposes and are only the decision makers in the room? Really where I'm trying to go with this is questioning why you're having meetings in the first place. If you're not running the meeting, questioning why you are attending. Do you really need to be there? Is it serving its purpose? Are there actions that come out of the meeting? Do you have time to take those actions when you're not in the meeting anymore? So that is one area. The other area is 
doing whether or not you're doing the right work. So are you busy because you're getting caught up in administration? Are you busy because you're doing someone else's work? You're you're providing support to someone else, but you're not really getting recognized for that. So another area driving this sense of busyness and toxicity is whether or not you're doing the right work. So have a look at the work that you're doing. And I know one of my loyal listeners, Sarah Hanstock, talks about doing time blocking and time tracking and actually sitting down to properly track where your time is going. It's a scary thought and I haven't done it yet, admittedly, but it is something that I am planning to do from next week for at least a month to see genuinely where does my time go? What am I spending my time doing? And I think it will be a real eye eye opener to see exactly where my time is going. Are you working to someone else's agenda? So that can be things like reacting to emails. So you're waiting for an email to come in or an email comes in and you're reacting to it immediately. This is something that I am working on myself by shutting down my emails, by only checking them twice a day, by being really focused on what it is that I want to achieve that day and setting things and and, and really only being really crystal clear about setting a goal of three things in any given day. So being really clear about what it is that I want to achieve. And if I achieve those three things, brilliant, then maybe I take the rest of the day off or I tackle the next thing that's on my to-do list. As a solopreneur, there is, believe me, always something to do in the business. So consider whether you are being reactive. So are you waiting for other people to essentially give you work versus being proactive by setting your own agenda, by being really crystal clear about what it is that you want to achieve? The other thing that can be driving this is a lack of boundaries, especially given the pandemic over the last couple of years where we're sleeping at home, we're sleeping at work, should I say, we are uh, working at home, you know, all of these things contributing to a real blur of lines between what we do at work and what we do at home. And the temptation when the laptop is there, when the laptop is in front of us to open up the laptop, to check the emails. If you have your emails on your phone, which I do not, I don't have my work emails on my phone. That was a very deliberate thing on my part. I don't have them on my phone. I have to open the laptop if I want to check my emails. So making sure that you have some really strict boundaries around that. And one thing I've started doing with my laptop is closing it down and moving it away from eye, anywhere that I can see it. So any kind of direct eye contact, let's say, with with my laptop. And so I've moved my laptop out of my line of vision in the evening. I'm not tempted then to just open it up and, and check on something or do a little bit of extra work. And again, going back to a conversation I would have had with Sarah Hanstock, we were talking about, uh, you know, you open the the uh, the laptop to do just one more thing and you end up doing 10 things. So, you know, that really impacts on this sense of busyness. Some things to consider then. I mentioned at the start, I flipped the script on saying that I'm busy and flipped it to being productive. So what does being productive versus being busy mean? Busy to me means it's busy work. It's It has no kind of purpose. It has no end goal. But when you're being productive, you're being very deliberate about what it is that you're doing. It's aligned with the goals that you've set for yourself, the goals that you want to achieve, the objectives that the business has. And it's very purposeful, the work that you do. And you're you're trying as much as possible to cut out that other busy work, which doesn't really have an end point, doesn't really have an end goal. And uh, sometimes it's the kind of stuff we have to do. You know, there's no really avoiding that. We'll try and limit that as much as possible. The other area that could be contributing to this then is having unclear objectives. So if you're not really clear on what it is that you're supposed to be doing, then you can just drift into doing any things that are not really that relevant to moving the dial, whether that's on on the business, whether it's moving the dial on your own goals that you've set for yourself. So being really clear about the objectives that you have. And if you're not clear on what the objectives or the expectations in your role are, please just ask someone, you know, it it might feel a bit awkward, but once you get that level of clarity, then I think it's, it's really, really important to focus on those. 
The other area that can be contributing to this is perfectionism. So we've reached a stage where we think something is good enough, but actually maybe we need to tweak it slightly. Maybe we need to put some animations onto a presentation. I'm thinking back to my uh, my corporate days delivering presentations to clients. So we're trying to really reach a stage and we're spending an additional two hours or, you know, it could even be more, it could be less, but we're spending additional time trying to get to get something to a level that really it doesn't need to be at. So consider if whether that's something that you're doing as well. And this is something that I've seen a lot on social media recently. And perfectionism, you know, I talk about imposter syndrome all the time. And perfectionism can be a sign that you are feeling these imposter feelings and you need to compensate in some way by making sure that everything is absolutely perfect. And here's a clue. You're not going to ever get to that state of perfectionism. I am perfectly happy to strive for excellence but I know that not everything is going to be perfect. The other things that can be contributing to this then is pure distraction. So if we want to keep ourselves busy because we want to avoid what's going on in the world, we want to avoid feeling our emotions, we want to avoid and numb ourselves in some way. So that's another reason that we're keeping ourselves busy. And that can be busy with work. It can be numbing ourselves with food, with alcohol, with shopping, with watching Netflix, uh, well, watching TV in general, I suppose. Um, and the other thing is that we're, we could be just in this habit now. We've spent two whole years of working from home, for the most part, working from home. And we're just in the habit of keeping things really busy all the time or being always available and thinking about like, what are the boundaries I can set for myself to get out of this habit of always feeling like I'm busy, always feeling under pressure, whether I'm at work, whether I'm at home, whether I'm working from home. So thinking about that as well. Now, the reason or one of the reasons I wanted to address this is, and if you've listened to the podcast for a while, you'll know this, there is a well-being report that I put together based on a survey I carried out last year. It's free to download. If you want the link to download the report, do feel free to reach out directly to me. Uh, you can reach out to me on EFA. that's A-O-I-F-E, at happieratwork.ie and I'd be happy to share that report with you. One of the big things that came out from the report is this idea of workload and having too much work. So hopefully the podcast today has given you some food for thought on some areas that you can address, that you can take control and take responsibility for. And I say responsibility because that is one of my core values. You need to take responsibility for your own life. No one, if you let other people start making choices for you or encroaching on your time, you need to start establishing some better boundaries around that. The other big thing that came out of the well-being report is that burnout, I mean, it's probably no great shock, but burnout is on the rise. Burnout is a real concern for people. I haven't been burnt out myself, but I have certainly been really close. And unfortunately, the desire in me was to keep working. And I knew that if I kept working, there was going to be a stage where I would definitely reach burnout. But there was this inner drive in me to keep going. So if that is you, I would really urge you to take a rest, really take a break to refresh, to recharge. Think about things that you really enjoy doing, get out into nature, maybe read a book, do a meditation just to stop you from feeling that sense of urgency that you really have to get everything done because you don't. I would love if you would get involved in the conversation over on social media. You can connect with me on LinkedIn, Aoife O'Brien, that's A-O-I-F-E, O apostrophe B-R-I-E-N, or on Instagram, happieratwork.ie, always welcome comments and questions and feedback on the podcast. So I would love if you would listen. I also want to highlight, I would love for you to take action based on this. So the actions that you could potentially take as a result of listening to this podcast episode are to review your to-do list. So have a look at your to-do list and see what on it aligns with the objectives or the goals that you're trying to achieve and what doesn't. Is there, are there things that you can take off that to-do list? Can you reduce your to-do list in any given day to just three items? And the other thing I want you to do is to write down your achievements because when you write down your achievements, you'll see exactly what you have done. And oftentimes we don't take enough time to really review and reflect on what we've done. All we can see is what's ahead of us and what we have left to do. So if you can do one of those two things and let me know how you get on. 
I really hope you enjoy today's solo episode. As I mentioned, I would love to interact with you on social media. So I hope to see you over there. That was another episode of the Happier at Work podcast. I am so glad you tuned in today. If you enjoyed today's podcast, I would love to get your thoughts. Head on over to social media to get involved in the conversation. If you enjoy the podcast, I would love if you could rate, review it or share it with a friend. If you want to know more about what I do or how I could help your business, head on over to happieratwork.ie. 